What's up, everyone? This is uh, Neil Looking Mighty Fan here, and uh, we're almost there, right? Um, uh, halfway through the preseason, two more games to go. Uh, the, the Eagles play next Saturday against the uh, Colts in Indianapolis and then wrap up the preseason right here in Philly against the Jets. So far, the Eagles are 2-0 and in the preseason for what it's worth. I mean, I know you can't always tell a lot about preseason, but the one thing that I am liking so far about what they've done this preseason is how the defense is played. And you have a new defensive coordinator here in Jim Schwartz. And there are a lot of new players here, you know, uh, to mix in with the, with, with, with the guys who have been here. One of the things that I like what they did this offseason was they addressed a lot of their leaders and retained a lot of their leaders. You know, the Malcolm Jenkins, Fletcher Cox, you know, taking care of them, making sure they're going to continue to be part of this building process here for a number of years. You have to identify who your young talent is, such as a Fletcher Cox, and you got to make sure he's here. You can't let him get away to another team, right? I like the fact that they were aggressive with that. They made sure that that happened. I mean, even extending the contract of Darren Sproles, who's one of the leaders on special teams, and, and, and even on the offense, even though he's in a limited role, uh, I, I like that. I, I like the fact that they, they addressed that. They, they took care of things because, you know, what we love here in Philadelphia, obviously a winning team, but it's a great defense. And that's something that, you know, <laughs> uh, we've been fortunate, you know, to see many great defensive players play here throughout how many years. I mean, it goes back to the Concrete Charlie days through the, you know, Bill Burgies and the, um, of course, the Reggie Whites and the, uh, the you know, the uh, Jerome Browns and the, Bob, you know, the, uh, the the Eric Allens, the Seth Joyners, you know, and then more recently to the uh, Brian Dawkins, Bobby Taylor, Troy Vincent, uh, Jeremiah Trotter, Hugh Douglas, and even even more recent times with the Trent Coles, and now we have Connor Barwin, um, you know, and you have uh, Fletcher Cox, Malcolm Jenkins. Um, look, I mean, they're leaders. They're guys that are going to, you know, are leading by example. This is how you're supposed to play in the National Football League. And I know that last year um, was a tough year. I mean, last year was 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 a horrible, horrible season. And and part of that, part of the reason that made it so bad was just the non-compete level that they played in some of those games. And you can say, well, the defense because they were on the field so long at the end of the year it caught up to them. And maybe there is some truth to that. But at the same time, there just wasn't a compete level in, at times. I mean, you go to that Thanksgiving game against Detroit. I mean, you go to the game against the Tampa Bay. They made Jameis Winston look like a look like you know Tom Brady. You know, I mean, you, you go to the to the Arizona game, the game I was at. We left before the end of the third quarter. I mean, it was an embarrassment. And and in this town, for fans to leave early, that's how you know it's just a horrible game. And that's how you know if people are just fed up with how the team's playing, because it's hard for fans here to leave early. You know, fans are usually there. I mean, fans are into these games, even to the end. They're there. You know, we're there rooting for the Eagles and, and you know, or, or booing or whatever. But we're there. You know, we don't leave. We're not a fan base that leaves early very often. And there was a few games last year, including the last home game against Washington, where the fans were leaving in the third quarter. And that just shows you how horrible last season was. And I really think that that did contribute to why Chip was dismissed before Week 17. I mean, yeah, this is a passionate fan base. This is a fa fan base that cares about their team, you know. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to convey here in this series. You know, now going into Season Three, you know, because there's a lot of you know there's a lot of talk about Eagle fans and you know what we are, you know. And I'm here to show you that you know, <laughs> yes, we do boo. <laughs> yes, we can get on players. But it's because we demand, we demand that they go out there and they compete every week, you know, because these fans are paying hard-earned money to go watch them. They've rooted for them since they were young. All we want to do is see a winner, you know, and it hasn't happened yet. We haven't had a Super Bowl. We all know that. It's well documented. The other fans in our division love to remind us about this, and, you know, it's, it's, it's old hat right now, right until they do it. But um, this is a very passionate fan base. I mean, this is a team that never left you know, and came back, <laughs> or anything like that. It's always been the Philadelphia Eagles. Guess what? It's always going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, and, and that's just how it is. We care about this team. We want to see them do well. We want to see them succeed. We're going to let them know when they don't. 
Um, it's just because we do care about this this franchise. We care about the team. Um, it's just how it is. Um, but last season, you know, was just an embarrassment. I mean, it was flat out an embarrassment. I mean, the funny thing is, even in Week 16 against Washington, as bad as things were, they still had a chance to win a division because of how bad the division was last year. And obviously, it didn't happen. They get blown out at home against Washington. Washington goes on to win the division, and you know. Obviously, we all know how last season ended. Not very good for the Eagles and not very good for Chip Kelly, who, who was fired before Week 17. Now he's with San Francisco. Good luck, 49er fans. <laughs> There's a honeymoon period with him now. Oh, it starts out good. But then... <laughs> but then, there's a lot of, What the hell are you going to do? <laughs> Why did you let him go? <laughs> he's the leader. You don't let them go. Anyhow, um, yes, a lot of bizarre moves by uh, Chip Kelly over the last few years in the offseason. And while this offseason certainly wasn't as exciting <laughs> as the last last offseason was with all these crazy moves going on, I think they were very calculative, and I think they made a lot of right moves. They addressed some of the leaders, retained them, extended contracts, brought them back, um, showed you know support to these players who are going to be part of the future of this franchise. Now, one of those guys did a pretty boneheaded thing. We all know in Lane Johnson now out uh, uh, 10 games more than likely, unless it gets overturned somehow. Um, but, uh, you know, stupid move by him. This offensive line, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is not, you know, it's not up there as one of the better ones in the league uh, already. So what Lane did is even more stupid. But, um We'll have to see how things play out. Um, the strength of this team, as we see so far in the preseason, though, is going to be defense and special teams. Maybe the offense will get there. You know, I really don't know what to expect with this offense. I just don't know. There's a lot of question marks. Obviously, the quarterback, Sam Bradford, can he stay healthy? Carson Wentz, if things are going south, do we see Carson Wentz before the end of the season? And I'll say this, I'd rather see Carson Wentz before the end of the season than Chase Daniel. <laughs> based on how he's looked so far. But then again, Sam Bradford looked like an MVP last year in the preseason. We all know how last season ended out. So you just can't tell in the preseason sometimes. But still, I think I would rather see Wentz out there than, than Chase. All, all due respect. I mean, he has a good name to be in Philadelphia named Chase. But, uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to be quite like Mr. Utley was around here. <laughs> but, um, but no, um, this defense so far in the um, – in the preseason has, I believe, nine takeaways. Four of them last week against Pittsburgh. And I know that Pittsburgh wasn't starting their big big guns out there like Roethlisberger or Antonio Brown. Of course, Le'Veon Bell suspended. Um, but uh, still, anytime you can, you know what, anytime you can go on the road and get a shutout, even if it's a preseason game, I think that still says something, particularly la after coming off of last season when they had just non-compete games. You know, it, it, it's good to see because you could look at the other side of the coin too. And you can say, well, because of those guys weren't playing, they could have laid down. You know, they could have, ah, you know, we don't have to be worried. We just have to step on the field and we'll win. You know, you can't have that approach. You know, you're, you're still putting in this new defense, new defensive schemes, and it's about being tougher. It's about getting those turnovers, um, you know, getting to the quarterback, creating havoc. And we saw that last week. And you saw that also in week one, um, you know, against Tampa Bay, particularly at the beginning of the game. I mean, how did the beginning of the game start, right? They get a special teams turnover, and then they get a, a defensive turnover on a fumble on the very next series. So they, they brought it from the beginning on, and that's what, you know, that's what we want to see. <laughs> I mean, are they going to be those, those 90s Eagles defenses or, you know, it, the heyday of the Andy Reid, Jim Johnson, you know, team's defenses right away? Probably not. <laughs> you know, this is a building step, but it's a good one. And, yes, it's going to help that they're not going to have to be on the field so long. Barring like a whole bunch of three and outs, you know, by the offense, this defense won't be on the field as long as they were in recent years with, with the Chip Kelly, you know, Speedy Gonzalez offense out there. Um, road, run, road, road runner offense, whatever you want to call it. But uh, we're not going to have that with, with, uh, with Doug Peterson's <laughs> offensive schemes. Um, so I'm looking forward to that aspect of it. I, I, I like so far what I've seen out of Jim Schwartz. I like so far what I've seen out of this defense. And you can say, well, they only played against a starting, you know, offense for a few series and, you know, whatever. Well, but still, going from where we were to seeing how they're playing now 
is almost night and day. And you can say, well, it's preseason, it doesn't matter. But it kind of does, because this is where you get your reps. This is where you get started, you know, for a season. And it's the things that you do here with putting in a new, you know, new defense, new defensive schemes that helps you moving forward. Now, it's not going to be perfect all the time. I mean, they're not going to shut out every opponent. You know, they're going to have times of struggle. But we want to see them compete, 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 compete. And I think that's what the theme of this season has to be. The word, the, the key word for this season is compete. You know, play hard. You know, uh, I don't know what to expect out of this season. I mean, you know, we're going into a season with a new head coach, a new defensive coordinator, a lot of different, you know, faces and, and names and, 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 and players. And, you know, you know, it, 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 could, it, it could be a great season. It could be a tough season. We just don't know. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns going into this year. The other thing is this division. Now, it might be better than it was last season. I can't believe it can be worse than it was last year, <laughs> right? But I don't think it's still a great division. I don't think there's still a powerhouse in this division. I know the Redskins won it last year almost by default. But are they just big juggernaut team? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, right? Dallas, if, if, if Romo goes down again, now, now I, I mean, they do have that young, young uh, Prescott, you know, playing pretty good, but it is the preseason. You can call it what you want. But he is playing pretty good. Maybe they're a little better even when Romo goes down. The Giants just don't know what to expect. They have a new coach, also a new system in there, too, that they're implementing. So there's a lot of unknowns and what-ifs going into this season with this division. So, you know, anything's possible. I mean, the team could the team can play great. You know, they can win the division. They can get 9, 10 wins, and oh, my God, here we are. Or they could be, a you know, what, what more than likely will happen, be a 7 to 9, 8 and 8 type year. You still learn. You, you, you know, you're getting into this with the new coaching staff. Maybe Carson Wentz comes in at some point. You see what he's about. Maybe not, but even not. Like I said before, it's okay. Let him sit. Let him watch. Let him see what it is to be a quarterback in the NFL. I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, if that's all he does this season, okay, and then get the reins next season, good. If Sam Bradford plays well, well, that his stock rises. You know, going into next this offseason, maybe they get some picks. <laughs> you know, for him uh, from another team that might be, you know, more in, in dire straits for a quarterback going into the next season. You know, who knows? Uh, and the draft more than likely will be in Philadelphia next year, so <laughs> it would be nice to have a few more picks to look forward to. I know we don't have a first-round pick barring a trade, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I like what they did this offseason. I like the fact that they were aggressive. They addressed who their leaders were. They took care of them, kept them in the fold for the future the present and the future. I, I, like I said before, I like the fact that they went out and, and made all those moves to get number two to get Carson Wentz because you do have to have a franchise quarterback. Uh, it's very, very rare that a team wins without a franchise quarterback. You have to address that quarterback. It's not going to be Bradford, with all due respect to him. you got to find your guy. It certainly won't be Chase Daniel. <laughs> so you got to find your guy, and if they felt that high on Carson Wentz and went out and got him, I have no problem with that. And oh, by the way, you drop some dead weight with Kiko Alonso and Byron Maxwell on, on, in the process. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Miami. <laughs> um, I'm perfectly fine with what they did. Is it a risk? Absolutely. But is there, there a high reward factor with it? Absolutely. Um, and and you know, you, you just never know how many of those fan bases would have seen this quarterback that gets drafted and said, "Oh, this guy's going to be the guy." How many Patriot fans said that about Tom Brady when he was drafted? Right. I mean, you just never know. Uh, right system for the guy comes in, works. Sometimes it doesn't, but you got to take that chance. Uh, even with teams that have already seen to have that guy in place, Aaron Rodgers, they get, you know, they draft when they when the Packers had Brett Favre. I mean, the Patriots get Tom Brady now later in the round, sure, but they had Drew Bledsoe there, and they draft Tom Brady, this guy out of out of Michigan. Who knew? <laughs> right, four Super Bowls later, what six Super Bowl appearances later? I mean, my God. But um, you, you do have to take that chance. You have to be able to draft that guy uh, and, and, and find who that is. I mean, the Rams are hoping they got it in Goff. The, as much as I hate this, Dallas is hoping they got that in, in, in Prescott. So far, so good with that, right? They already have Romo there, but they figure they need a guy for the future. They drafted Prescott. You know, I'm hoping it, it doesn't work out for them, but so far... <laughs> 
he's looked pretty good. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you have to address that guy. You have to try to find that guy, and that's what the Eagles did. I have no problem with it. I have no problem with the fact that they made a trade uh, with, with, uh, um, with the Titans and brought in uh, Doriel Green Beckham. I have no problem with that at all. I mean, what did you give up? You gave up Kelly, who was a turnstile at guard. You know, okay, <laughs> thank you, Titans. Now, if Kelly goes on to have, you know, a Hall of Fame career with the Tennessee Titans, well, I mean, that's, that's still the risk that you have to do by making a trade. Anytime you make a trade in anything, you know, it, it could always backfire. I mean, I don't care how bad the guy plays on your team. He can go there and find himself and become this all-pro player or a Hall of Fame caliber player. You just never know. Many years ago, the Phillies traded away this young second baseman by the, by the name of uh, Ryan Sandberg in a throw-in deal with the Chicago Cubs. He, went, he goes on to have a Hall of Fame career with Chicago. <laughs> so you just never know sometimes. Um, I like the fact that they went out and got uh, Doriel Green Beckham. I can't profess that I know a ton about him. I didn't watch a lot of Titans games. I didn't even have him on, a, on my fantasy team last year. So I don't really know a whole lot about Doriel Green Beckham, but I do know this. He seems to be an athletic receiver, a red zone target, and a guy that, that can stretch the field. And guess what? Before he got here, we didn't have that. <laughs> okay, we had smaller receivers, not big go-up-and-get-it type guys, and they saw it as an opportunity to get a guy. It's a low-risk, high-reward uh, uh, deal. If it doesn't work out, well, they drop him you know, in, in the offseason. Not a big deal. Uh, I, I think it was a really good move. It's an aggressive move. They saw a need. They needed a, 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 re, a receiver uh, of, of more of a caliber ilk. They, they had a taker in, in the Titans for, for uh, Kelly. Make the move. And, you know, after the last few seasons, maybe a guy whose last name's Kelly probably shouldn't be here anyhow. <laughs> oh, I had to throw that one in there. So I'm fine with that. Today they brought in Stephen Tulloch, a veteran, you know, linebacker who, who played under the Jim Schwartz uh, defensive schemes in, in Detroit years ago, who, who thrived in that in those scheme, schemes those years ago. I have no problem with that. You know what? He, he's a veteran. You know, he's, he's past his prime. But what is he? He's a leader. He comes in here, he knows full knowledge of this defense. He can play it right away. He can step right in and, and, and be a starter, or he can teach it to the younger guys, right? The Jordan Hicks of this uh, of this line linebacking core. Um, this is where you have to be in this th and when we're calling this, this is where you have to be. So you need guys like that. You know, uh, it, it helps. I mean, they brought in a lot of guys who were uh, um, who played under his defensive schemes, whether it's Detroit, whether it's Buffalo, where ha what have you, um, I, I think it's fine. And, you know, Jim's comfortable with those guys. Those are his guys from back in the day. Why not? You know, why not bring some of those guys here? You know, it adds depth, and it adds that, uh, you know, veteran leadership to this defense. Um, you know, you, you, can't really, you can't really fault them with what they've done so far in the preseason. I know a lot of people say, well, they shouldn't have brought Sam Bradford back, but you know what? Even that might not be a bad move. Why? Because, well, he is a veteran. I mean, he hasn't, he's been injury prone. We know this. <laughs> but at the same time, he is a veteran. Carson Wentz can learn by watching him for the season. If things don't work out, okay, well, maybe Carson Wentz comes in there and he's the starter. Eh? I'll, uh, what Donovan did those years ago, when he came in for now the head coach, Doug Peterson. You know, that worked out pretty well, <laughs> I'd say. So, you know, what they've done this offseason, no complaints. No complaints. I, I complain about Lane Johnson for being an idiot, okay, for doing, <laughs> taking something he shouldn't have been taking. But other than that, you, you can't really have a lot, say a lot of negatives about what they've done this offseason. Um, I think all the moves they made have been very calculative in the right direction, addressing what the, who the leaders are, taking care of them, bringing in guys that can be those the, that kind of, you know, the veterans to show the young guys this is what you do, how you play this defense. Again, full marks for what they did this offseason. Um, you know, is that going to uh, uh, bring success this year? Time's going to tell with that. We just don't know. I mean, this is one of those off seasons that you just don't know what to expect. Uh, if if they weren't in the NFC East, I'd probably be a little more worried <laughs> about the speculations for could they even possibly be in the playoffs this year. Um, I do think this is a division that is winnable. 
Uh, I know that the Redskins won it last year, and you know you give them marks for that. But are they a perennial powerhouse? I don't know. Um, Dallas, again, quarterback goes down again this year. Who knows? Even as well as, Pres- as uh, Prescott's looked this in, in, in the preseason, you just never know when, when, the, when the big lights turn on in the regular season game. It's a lot different when you're going up against the opposing team's number ones, you know, basically the whole game. Number one defense, you know, for the most part. Um, it could be a little different. Um, so we'll see. And the Giants, like I say, you know, you just never know with them either. They've been very Jekyll and Hyde. I mean, their fans can attest to that the last few seasons. Uh, and now they have a new, you know, head coach there, a new system. So you just don't know what to expect. They still have a lot of talent, and particularly on the offensive side of the ball. But you just never know. I mean, it, it's just one of those things. They, they've been very roller coastery the last few years. So who knows? Same thing with the Eagles. We don't know what to expect. But I'll tell you this: I want to see this team compete. Defensively, I want to see this team compete. That's what they've done so far in the preseason. I like that. The takeaways, they've been aggressive. They're getting at the quarterback. I, I like that. I like what I've seen so far. Um, even the young guys, you know, the third and fourth stringers, I mean, they're bringing it too. I mean, they've all gone at it, you know, whether you're the starters, whether you're the backups, whether you're the backup backups, they're all playing hard, and I like that. It's night and day from what was going on a year ago. And... Uh, you know, you can, you can tell there's guys who are just happy. You know, they're happy being in this defense. They're hitting <laughs> in, in, uh, in, in training camp, you know, in the preseason games. You know, they seem to be more ready and more prepared for it. Um, so certainly the training camp, I think, went pretty well. I mean, they did knock out Jordan Matthews. But, uh, <laughs> hey, I mean, that, that's the risk of playing this game. Um, injuries are definitely going to be part of it. Um, I, I like the fact they've gone after it. I like what I've seen so far in the preseason, and I do believe that that's going to be one of the strengths of this team this season, as well as the special teams. I mean, look, we know the special teams is going to be probably going to be the best in the league again. Um, that's just who they are. Uh, they have a great special teams coach. They have great players on that special teams, the coverage units. Um, of course, Darren Sproles, uh, Donnie Jones. I mean, we'll see about the kicking situation this year, but still. A lot of talent on that special teams, a lot of talent on that defense, and if those guys play with the ferocity that they've shown so far in the preseason, they can get that going in the regular season. We're going to be very proud of this defense going forward. You know, again, it, it, it's all about building. This season is a building block. You know, can I, can I sit here and, and tell you with a straight face, oh, we're going to win the division, we're going to go to the playoffs, we're going to win a playoff game, you know, no, I, I can't say that because I don't know what to expect. I mean, it's it's a schedule that there, there's games that are winnable. There's games that kind of scare me, <laughs> um, particularly with uh, how the offense has done so far in the preseason. But still, um, a, a, you never know. Sometimes it, it, it's seasons like this you go into with, with not great expectations, but they become really fun seasons. Like it was, what, Chip Kelly's first year, right? So you just never know what to expect. I'm always the internal optimist. I always hope that, that this is going to be a great year. You know, I always look forward to watching, you know, football and the Eagles. Um, you know, with all due respect to all the other teams in Philly, this is the team, as you can tell by this series, I get geared up for, you know. And, and, and it's, it's easier to do that in football because it's a shorter season. There's only 16 regular season games and in the playoffs. So you can kind of really get geared up for it more than in the other sports. It just keeps how many games, right? 80-plus games and everything. It's harder to do that. When it comes to the playoffs or towards the end of the season, you can get geared up for it, but it's harder to do that. But football, you can. And um, like I said, one of the things I'm excited for, and I've said this before, one of the things I'm excited for is is, is Jim Schwartz. The fact that they got a no-nonsense defensive coordinator here. We The last time we had that was Jim Johnson. And we all know how well that worked. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that, that Schwartz is Johnson, all right? Jim Johnson was a legend, okay? And, and you really, it, 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 it's, it's unfair to compare someone to him, but I like what I've seen so far out of what Jim Schwartz is bringing to this defense and addressing the players that he wants on this defense, leaders, guys who are going to get after it every game. Uh, and, and that's what you need because particularly now when the offense might struggle, and let's be, fate, let, let's be honest, they will struggle this season, uh, you know, with the quarterback position, the receivers, if they keep dropping the ball, 
the running back position. I mean, can Matthew stay healthy? There's a lot of ifs, right? Can the quarterback stay healthy? Can Matthew stay healthy? Can the receivers catch? <laughs> What's Doriel Green Beckham's role going to be? I mean, there's a lot of ifs. There's a lot of question marks. The offensive line, there's a lot. So this defense is going to have to carry this team. You know, it's going to start with this defense. Um, and you know what? In Philly, we love in, in Philly we love a great defense, and that's something that we we hang our hat on so many times. So many great players who have played here, including B. Doc, who came who came back. Another great move they made in the offseason, bringing Brian Dawkins back into the fold. He's now going to be a scout. Great move. Um, great move uh, by them. It, it, it's so great to see him back. You know, in Eagles Green, where he belongs. You know, um, it's an awesome move. I'm happy for that. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the for the organization to do that. And, and again, that shows that they, you know, even players from the past, guys who were leaders, they want to bring them back. They want to have them in to help this team get to that ultimate stage, right, to that ultimate goal that we're all waiting for. <laughs> um, so I'm happy with that. And, and I could deal with a season where we're building, a couple seasons maybe where we're building. But you know what? If this defense is playing lights out and they're getting after it every week, it, you know what? It makes it easier <laughs> to have to you know go through a couple seasons of rebuilding. If you're seeing the defense grow to become one of the better defenses in the league and, and the offense comes along and it gets there kind of like it did you know, in Andy's early years here with the Eagles and Jim Johnson, you know, that I mean, how fun was that, right? So to have something similar to that, I'm all for it. I, I'm, I'm willing to go through, to take the lumps, go through a season or two where we're okay. May, maybe we're, we're not making the playoffs. Maybe we're, you know, we're building for something. But I'd rather that than what happened last year where the compete levels were just here. I want them to be here, and they have to stay here all season. You know, it's hard to do that, I know. But they got to be here. No more of this. It's got to be this. <laughs> so in a nutshell, um, I'm looking forward to the season. I always look forward to the season. Um, even though it, it, if it's a season that looks like it, it, it might be a rebuilding type year, getting the, getting the schemes all in the place this year and you know, letting it you know, go, um, I, I still look forward to it. Um, I, I'm really excited about the defense and, and what it could be you know, going forward. I'm excited, you know, um, to, to, to see how some of the players, you know, who, who came here could, like, fit in. Toriel Green, Beckham. Um, kind of, you know, I'm excited to see what, what he's about. I really don't know a lot about him. So it's like a new piece, you know, coming in, and you want to kind of learn what this guy's all about. You know, if he, if he helps stretch the field and open things up for other guys, great move. I mean, that's, that's a great move. So I'm excited for that. Um, I'm certainly excited about the future with Carson Wentz. Uh, I think he showed some things, you know, in that preseason. He does have to learn how to slide. <laughs> but you know what? He showed a lot of toughness in that game, and, and you got to respect that. You know, it's his first, you know, uh, 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 snaps in the NFL. I mean, even it's a preseason game, and he showed some things. Um, so I think we have a lot to be excited for for him, you know, moving forward. When that first starts, who knows? If it's this year, if it's next season – but I'm excited for it. I, I like the move. I, I still like the fact that they got him and made all those moves up to get him, uh, even if it takes away a number, uh, a first round pick from us. You know, with the draft being in Philly next, you know, this off season. I mean, okay. <laughs> if Carson Wentz goes on to win a few Super Bowls here, I don't think any of us is going to care that we didn't have a number one, a first round pick in the, when the draft was in Philly. You know, years years from now. But that, the future, we'll see with that. We'll, we'll have to wait for that. Um, but yes, uh, looking forward to season of the fan season three. Uh, I will be back again with the next video for season of the fan. Uh, uh, just before the, uh, the season starts, I'll have my, uh, preseason, uh, NFL predictions as well. The annual picks for me last year, I didn't do too good. So I'm hoping to do a little better this year. You know, it's like the Eagles. I didn't do too good last season. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this year's, uh, uh, picks will be a little better. Uh, but what those picks will be, I'm just waiting until the end of the preseason, you know, barring, you know, in case of injuries or something like that. I don't want to make picks right now. So I'll make them as usually I do just before the season starts. And then we'll get into season of the fan season three, weekly, you know, videos here for the Eagles and going through another season. And, uh, yeah, so Eagles are 2-0 and in the preseason. 
I know it doesn't mean a whole lot, but after what happened last season, it's nice to be undefeated right now in something. <laughs> so you must excuse our, our happiness for that, you know? So anyhow, I'll see you guys again uh, as the season draws closer, probably towards the beginning of September will be the next video for Season of the Fan. Uh, I'm sorry I've run on for a half hour, but you know I just had a lot to say. And I'm sweating, man. It's hot. I got to get under a fan. All right, everyone. Take care. As always, go Birds. We got the Colts coming up this week in season, preseason number three. That's usually the game where the starters stay on the field the longest in the preseason, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but we'll see what they do in Indy. Try to keep the undefeated streak going in the preseason. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye. Go Birds.